Good morning, everyone. Just a quick sound check. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me and everybody can see the shared screen. All right, good morning. It is Friday and it is July 9th, 2021. It's 9.22 a.m. Eastern. Major economic releases for today. At 10 o'clock, we have the final wholesale inventories, and then we have the G20 meeting all day today and tomorrow. This is pretty much it on the economic calendar. And uh, next week, uh, we are also rich in economic releases, lots and lots of economic releases. Um, and uh, we also start earning season on, I think it's, yeah, on Tuesday, on the 13th. Yeah, so uh, that's very exciting when fundamentals take center stage. Right now, as you can see, any kind of release, any kind of data is just flipping the price on one side or another. All right, so let's begin our analysis for today. Uh, we're going to begin with commodities today. And gold, as you can see here on the chart, it is super range bound. This also looks like a head and shoulder pattern. Uh, and we have the support level, which is relatively into the 1797 area. We also have resistance, the first area of resistance uh, from the um, from the right shoulder and from the left shoulder above 1800. So 1800 is going to be a big level. We trade above it. We will continue higher. We break below these levels right here. And again, it's going to be a test and a retest. It's not going to be one candle down. So you will have to see some kind of formation that will be conclusive to short into that area. Other than that, this is still seen as a bullish environment. Uh, so again, the level that we want to see <clears throat> the uh, gold trade above is going to be over the 1800s. If we escape over these 1800s, we have room for the 1815. This is still uh, resistance and it's also a bullish trigger that we have had into yesterday's trading session and then we have erased everything we we came back down because gold and silver are still trading into that relative uh, tough technical spot where you can where um, we have both algos uh, bullish and bearish that are uh, present into uh, into that area. So that's why it's just back and forth, back and forth until it gets more interest to the upside or more interest to the downside. We will remain relatively sideways. So like I said, the key level is to get it over that 1800 over these tops right here, 1807 or so. All right. Gold, um, like I said, is looking um, to trade on a higher time frame structure, not necessarily on the one hour. It doesn't represent a good um, opportunity on smaller time frames. But when you're looking, for example, on the daily chart, things become a lot more obvious. Uh, we talked about the head and shoulder pattern. Here's the head and shoulder pattern. We have the right shoulder, we have the head, we have the left shoulder, and this is the neckline. So below the neckline is bearish above the uh, obviously above the head will be bullish, but also can be bullish above these uh, resistance levels that we have discussed. Also, we have a death cross right here, and uh, that is putting pressure on price as well. And also we have a doji from yesterday's trading session. We have a high and we have a low from yesterday's trading session from the doji. It's not as easy as bullish above or bearish below here because we do have this uh, 10 exponential moving average, which is really trying to hold. Now, remember that the price is caught in between the 50 SMA, 200 SMA, so two higher uh, moving averages, heftier moving averages. Price definitely needs to trade above these moving averages to regain momentum. And if this is going to happen throughout next week, or I don't know, miraculously it's going to happen today. Uh, but if this and when is this is going to happen and the price is going to get over the 1830 to 1840 area, then, and it's going to stay above, then we could see an easier transition towards the 1900s. So that's definitely going to be a lot more easier 
uh, on the pattern. So like I said, smaller time frame patterns are extremely deceiving. I try to stay away from them and I don't trade them unless I see something super clear. Okay, today's the last day of the week. So therefore, special attention goes to this candle that is going to close into four o'clock. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, we are still trading. We had the slingshot pullback and the release for higher, and we're still trading into the same pressure that we have on similar time frames. Yet the weekly chart is a lot more conducive because we are uh, moving higher from a higher low. So that reinforces the long bias for gold, at least for, for now. And let's discuss about oil. Oil had a daily rotation. Uh, currently, it is trading higher from the overnight trading session. So the trigger actually happened shortly uh, after the open at six o'clock. So that was the daily, uh, daily rotation. You can see it right here, noted. And then the price pulled back, obviously. And this is very common that once you get the trigger, you're going to get the pullback. And the pullback took the price right into this 10 exponential moving average where it rotated. This would be like the better entry opportunity because this would reinforce the fact that the price is ready. It's really giving us a support level that we can act on and providing us with an entry. We have the daily rotation here. So this, uh, this was the try. So again, it happened at 2 a.m. We're up at 2 a.m. You would, you would be able to be in this trade right now. This is a first target level into the 74. We had this target before and we have this target again. This is the 200 simple moving average. And uh, this is a big deal because if the price is going to coil around this, it may create a little bit of weakness, taking into consideration the um, pattern currently that we have on the one hour because we have a high, we have a lower high and we were setting up for a lower high right here, but we uh, actually took that out. So uh, at this moment, no trades in oil and no trades in gold. Can it run higher? Yes, it can run into the next target. Approximate target is going to be 74, uh, 74.50 area. Okay, so let's talk about the indices. Uh, we have all the indices that are uh, relatively strong except for NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the only index that is down 20 points to start the session. And uh, you could obviously see why that is happening because we have a cluster of resistance. Look at these, all of these resistance spots right here. Now this is massive, massive resistance. And unless we trade above every single resistance to the upside, things are not gonna move along. So NASDAQ needs a lot more to digest for higher. And NASDAQ actually has, let me just put it in here. Uh, this is going to be uh, that bullish above level. So I forgot to put it here. So this is the bullish above. Okay, so this is the area that it needs to break in order to uh, start moving higher. So I'm not going to touch it unless it probably is probably want to go into this level right here. And the level that I'm looking at is into the 740 to 750 area. We also have uh, three indices that are higher. So this is uh, again Nasdaq is under a lot of pressure. As you can see, it has a low, it has a higher low, and it has a double top formation here. So it needs to either break the double top formation to continue higher, or if it breaks below the 14,640, it will continue lower. But careful because you could get an abrupt pullback all the way into this area, which is a confluence area. Let me just take this back because this was our entry from yesterday, the try one short squeeze that worked the first time around. Typically, these short squeezes don't work the first time and you have to take it once it fails and then you have to take it again you have to wait for the reshuffling and then you have to uh you have to definitely uh take it again all right um as you can see we have the confluence support from yesterday's trading session and actually this was resistance from yesterday's trading session that right now uh becomes uh becomes support you could see it here that's why i left it so you guys can uh you can see that uh all we have to do is change the color uh change the name to uh, support. It was yesterday's resistance. So technically speaking, it is right on the money because it came back into resistance, now support. 
and it's moving higher. So in the overnight trading session, like I said, the one o'clock to two o'clock uh, period was the time that everything started to trigger for higher. So what can we expect here? Well, you have to have a lot of patience to wait either uh, to break above this purple line, nothing in the meantime, everything that is here is gonna be ultra aggressive. Um, and we're going to reference this 640 as our new support area because you can see that we came in, we tested, and it's possible that we may come in uh, and test this area again, have a little bit of a slingshot to the downside. You saw how we traded NASDAQ in uh, yesterday's trading session. So uh, the support level is there for an emergency stop, and we have to make sure that we assess really well the area. Um, and uh, as far as the m and S&P goes, it's up 20 points on the day and it is trading into resistance as you can see here. So what it did this morning, hello, it came right into resistance and it reacted off of this resistance, got a little bit of a pullback right here. We have a nice uh, confluence of support for the ongoing price session. We're seeing the moving averages that are trying to catch up with price. Huge improvement from yesterday's trading session from the short squeeze and the price uh, is poised for a continuation higher. Uh, no bullish above, no bearish below. Uh, based on the current environment, uh, the pattern favors more upside than downside. Uh, and we will be looking for long opportunities. When do we become short? Well, as uh, if the price is going to start challenging the uh, 4293, then we will look for a continuation lower probably or some kind of calibration uh, that uh, may happen around this area. This is the big delicate area. This would be the weekly sell into the 4264 area. Uh, this is going to be into the 80 area, the next support, and we have the 4295 into the 30 area. All this area is a big, big fluffy cushion of support right here. All right, this could possibly be a sandwich. I'm not very excited about it because as you can see here, we had the trigger at 11 o'clock and we had the big blast uh, from uh, these highs right here that happened at four o'clock in the morning. Actually, at three o'clock, we had the first pinch when the London session opened. So the London session took the price higher. What a surprise, because this week, all they did was to take the price lower. And then it, uh, we were locked in the New York trading session to uh, repair the damage. All right, so no damage done in the overnight trading session. And you can see here that we are right now six points up in NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is uh, forcing a little bit higher right now. If we start trading over 37, we need to uh, watch for a formation. We need to watch for some kind of pattern, some, some, something that is gonna provide us with a good uh, entry and stop. Therefore, we need to have the risk, right? Because we can't take it here because we don't know where the stop is, right? What is the stop that we're gonna apply? Are we gonna apply it here? Are we gonna apply it here? Or are we gonna apply it all the way there? So it depends on the targets. You can see that we have very tight targets above, very tight resistance areas above. So that means that the price is not going to have fluidity and it's not going to have the velocity to expand higher. So uh, this is going to be difficult here. And this is going to be difficult very here when NASDAQ is going to uh, run into the same problem. But NASDAQ is having a lot more problems than uh, the m and &E uh, okay, so um, let's uh, turn to the Dow here, the Dow testing support. We do have an area of support um, into the 490. We do have a level of support, confluence support actually all the way from 420 uh, to 300. So it's about 120 to 150 point that we have the support level here. Um, currently, all the patterns are trading more or less into the same uh, kind of structure because we have a low and a higher low. We have a low and a higher low in S&P and we have a low and a higher low in Russell, which means that they're trying to work out on getting back into the bullish pattern. So this is a really good sign for the price for a continuation higher. Uh, so the Dow is trading into resistance. You can see the double top formation. And no, if you're seeing a double top, doesn't mean that you're going to short it. It just means that the, if the price is there, it's there for a reason. It's there either to challenge it and to pop up even higher because we do have lots of targets above um, into, uh, into the Dow. So the next target in the Dow, if we trade over 600, we're, we have about a 100 point tradable void. So this is what we should be focusing on. And also we have Russell that is also trying to change the structure because we have the low and the higher low. And you can see here, this is a decision area for today. It's going to be bullish above and it's going to be 
sort of crappy below. So this, it doesn't necessarily mean bearish, but it means like if I'm going to chop, chop, chop. And if you try to get along, I'm going to chop you into pieces. Okay. This is what this line is right here. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult until it digests this area. But uh, through the same structure, as you can see, they're still trading uh, quite bullishly. The one thing that uh, Russell ha uh, doesn't have in his favor is the 200 SMA, but it also has a pretty decent tradable void above. It's not gonna be all fluent into resistance into the 77 to 80, because if you look at the left-hand side, you do have all of this grind that happened right here on Wednesday in the overnight trading session before the big drama collapse. Okay, so you have this, you have this grind to the left hand side that is going to uh, put a lot of resistance on the upcoming price action. All right. Uh, so uh, the one index that I'm noticing that has a little bit more relative strength percentage wise, structure wise as well uh, is going to be YM. Percentage wise, 86% in Russell and 20 points up is nothing to be to ignore, but let's see how it's reacting off of these MAs right here. Okay, so this is pretty much it uh, for the morning analysis. Bonds are pulling back, bonds topping tails into resistance. In fact, I'm going to show you guys the bonds here, uh, ZB. Okay, so I'm going to take it from the daily chart. This is classic aggressive short um, into, um, into the 200 SMA on the daily. You had a daily rotation that um, is pushing the price higher. And then we become bullish again. 162 is the bullish again area. So we're not that far from that point. ZN, pretty much the same. ZN here, ZN right here. Uh, pretty much the same structure. Uh, we're having copper that I, I literally am um, I'm looking at it. Um, and I have been um, watching it for um, for the last two weeks, I would say. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this is very bullish right here. So uh, if you're looking at the weekly structure, <coughs> if today we're going to start closing above 35, 37, this could be a go for higher. All right. But not now. Uh, now would be very aggressive. I mean, can you take it now? Obviously, you can take it. You can take it anywhere into this area because it's still trading into a weekly formation. Put the stop under four dollars and let it go. First target into the four fifty to four sixty. Okay, uh, grains a uh, very weak price action activity uh, moving lower, um, and also natural gas. I want to put here natural gas. All right, let's take it to here. All right, yesterday had a little bit more price advancement, escaping over this high. It's really accelerating, it's trying to accelerate to $4. Uh, <clears throat> right now, it, I, I think that we really need a lot steeper pullback, probably into the 325 to 330. That's what I, that's what I would look for. Um, and currently the day's on the doji. So nothing to trade in natural gas, to, uh, at least today. All right, so let's take it back to oil, back to our regular charts. And let's stop for some uh, action here. Let's see what we have going on. All right, I'm gonna put this on the 15 minute here to see if we could uh, find something and uh, back to the five minute in all of these uh, charts. Inside bar doji, uh, it has room to go here into the 2250. So we have inside doji, we have support into 44, and then we have 2250, see it already triggered. All right. All right, this is the big line in the sand, the confluence resistance. We do have the New York trading session setting support at 450. NASDAQ is not picking up, at least not now. It may uh, start getting back on track as soon as, uh, As soon as we have the news out, the economic release.
My focus would be YM. It's already trading into that resistance area right now. So it's also a daily rotation. This is this will enter into a high velocity area right now. Um, the only thing that we can do right now is wait for 945. We're getting so close <clears throat> to 10 o'clock, but um, it reacted off the two minute high low with an inside bar. So the two minute was, um, I would say rather sloppy. Uh, but it was it opened, you could see the calibration and then tightening and then launching, but it launched right into resistance. So now we need to see how it's going to um, tackle the 600. Because other than that, you know, the risk level is really high. The risk needs to be way under here. So you can see that it's still trading. So the 450 is going to be the risk 450. It's trading right now at almost 630. Okay, so the stops are very wide. We're either going to get a pullback or um, S&P is also into the same kind of, not quite into the same boat, uh, but it is a little bit relative strong compared to the rest of the indices and it's doing a, a five minute doji high low from the open and you guys can see it right there and uh it's trying to fill the gap uh from yesterday remember the drama so still has not um filled the gap from yesterday and if we get it back into the uh back into the 52 53 53 is the all time high 53 25 we are expanding higher. The problem with NASDAQ is that it has achieved the extension level. And that's why it's uh, that's why it's dead right now. Because if you're looking at the extensions that we have, okay, for example, I'm gonna put it on the daily, you can see that it has achieved the 261.8, right? And this is uh, uh, so we we went into that area on the seventh, eighth, and today, ninth. So you could see uh, the problem that it's having. This is a huge extension, guys. This is coming from a higher time frame. It's coming from a monthly chart. Okay, so that's why it's having so many problems. Because when you're looking at, you know, a top-down analysis, when you're doing your top-down analysis, you have to be aware of where the price is trading, and if it's trading on a higher time frame into uh, resistance, then uh, definitely. You can't do anything about it. You have to wait until you have more proof. All right. All right. So no chasing, no nothing at this point. Um, let's see. I want to take a quick look at some stocks here to see what's running so we can see what to focus on. All right. So NASDAQ stocks are um, taking at least a break today. Um, AMD may be interesting for Monday. Mm. Boeing, Disney, Strong, UNH, Home Depot, again, 3M. Money back into these value stocks. Uh, Nike, all-time high. Costco, another new high, all-time high. Um, Walmart is going to be a top watch for next week. Uh, IBM sideways. Like I said, IBM usually does that. It, what it does is it shakes everybody out and then they load the boat um, at a cheaper price. Okay. Pfizer is sideways today, popping a little bit. I understand that they applied for another, for a booster shot for, um, for the vaccine. So they applied for a booster shot and probably more money. That's why it's popping right here. So um, uh, Cisco is acting really well. Um, uh, 
Oh yeah, Phyllis, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's up to everybody how they, some people like to have them right on the same chart. I like to have them on a different chart. For example, if we're getting, um, um, and I'm gonna tell you when I decided to do this, um, when we have, because obviously no nobody has ever traded a pandemic. <laughs> okay, so uh, when we had those, crazy wild price swings that we had like literally i i traded through the dot com bubble i traded through 2008 2009 i have never seen anything like that violence the violence in price and if if the let's say if the price wanted to retrace retracements are no longer than one to two days uh, usually something that would last a month or two or three or six months. Now it's just a day or two days and it's coming super violently down. And then the next day or the next two days, the price is going back up. So I found that, uh, you know, the more I had more information on my charts and different time frames, because you guys know you have to watch those different time frames. You don't watch your different time frames. You're never going to be able to trade. Literally, never, because you need to see what is going on at each and every single level. Because you can have, for example, one time frame that is dictating higher and another time frame that is dictating lower. And based upon what time frame you're looking at, that is going to influence. So. Um, I found that I needed a lot of help and I needed a lot of eyes on charts. And uh, obviously I'm trading alone. So um, I came up with this uh, idea to have, for example, uh, some retracements. And back then I had some retracements uh, even on a 15 minute chart because we had 12, uh, 1200 points down days, if you recall. And uh, I had them even on the 15 minute because I needed to keep a watch, okay, and say, okay, so this is the level here on a higher time frame. This is the level here. And when you're swing trading, you have to have this. Like when you're swing trading, you have to have, you have to definitely have to have this. All right, NASDAQ waking up, Russell still meandering, Russell still not my favorite. Um, not going to do anything Russell today, guaranteed. And we have a mini base in S&P at the high. Uh, it is a one minute base into the highs. It is really fast approaching and <laughs> it has room to 42, 40 to 42, which is not far away from 39 and a half, which is the high. So we are going to look for, um, see there's a brand new high in S&P. The next resistance is 40. This is also a 15 minute high low. So this is 40 by, if you wanna take it for a gap, but like I said, it doesn't have a lot of room, but the stop would be 25. And the ultimate target would be 44. See, it hit 40. So it had, the, let's see how it's digesting this. It does have a little bit of room for higher. Like I said, 45 tops, 45 tops. And then from 40, 45 uh, to 47, it's going to be decision area. And then if we, if the price is going to break that area, it is going to move into the 43, 50, uh, 53. Uh, some topping tails into the Dow. Dow was the most accelerated. Remember, we are still uh, low in volume. This whole week and last week, low, low volume. That's why you saw the price manipulated to the upside and to the downside. So a lot of manipulation here. Banks are moving higher, which is why with... Um, Financials and oil moving higher. The uh, ES, S&P futures is moving higher as well.
Oh my gosh, Mark. I'm watching this um, YM here. I don't like the fact that it's not, it has not pulled back and I don't like the activity in NASDAQ still in Russell. <laughs> yeah, it, it broke out over that uh, 435 area. All right, so YM has been running for the last three hours. In fact, four hours. Like really solid running over that um, 200 SMA. So since it broke the 200 SMA, actually more like one, two, three, four, five hours, sorry, five hours. So that was the sign of, you know, the break breakout sign. I mean, it's I'm I'm watching it. Like I said, I'm watching it on the one minute and the two minute. This is what I'm watching here. This is the void that it's going to go to. I'm afraid to take it where where it is right now because um. So the stop would be uh the stop would be 600, right? This is where the stop would be under 600. Then again, here we're just levitating into like thin air uh, and there's no way to know whether we're gonna get a pull back into resistance or, or if we're gonna start retracing because um, oftentimes, I mean, we've definitely, and the thing that I was watching, this is the one hour, okay? So basically, if you think about it, since the correction, it ran for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 hours, right? Five hours, five hours above the 200 SMA. So, I mean, when, when is it going to stop? I mean, it's going to pull back at one point. I don't want to get in when it's going to start pulling back. That's my point. And uh, with ES, Here's the yes. running higher. And here's Russell picking up. Odell, definitely we have to, we have to get together. We have to do a get together. Wow, look at this market. So NASDAQ out of the question, at least now. Okay. Um,
We have final wholesale inventories right now at 10 o'clock. <clears throat> At 11, we also have a federal money uh, policy report. It should be kind of done by then. I know, I know, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> okay, finally, yay, a little bit of a pullback in YM. I'm so happy when I see that because that probably may get us like a some kind of an entry. Um, you can see here in NASDAQ, the bigger picture. Um, support level is 660, around 660. Um, See, let's see the one hour. See, the one hour is pretty interesting here. Let's get this here. Gonna eliminate those lines. We get the picture, it's gonna be a rough ride. But I'm looking here at this doji on the one hour. So the trigger would be uh, 727. Wow, really YM, really? I mean, you could see here, it was sort of like a triple bottom. Uh, they're all higher. And I'm looking at this one hour rotation. See this doji here. I don't like the fact that we still have this 50 SMA here and we definitely need to close above. But now we have another hour to close above. Literally, we have 59, sec 59 minutes <laughs> as of right now. And then the first target is going to be into the, that's the problem. The first target is going to be 35 to 37. Yeah, see what happens is that, you know, these moves um, originated in the overnight trading session. So right now it's so hard to chase them because you have no idea whether, you know, they're going to keep on going or they're going to start pulling back. Thank you so much to Sheil for sharing it with the room. Oh, I know, and crazy Uncle Russell here. Let's check it out. So yeah, it does have room into the 77. See the 15 minute had this pullback and entry 57-ish area, but it was the choppiest Okay, gold wants to break out. Let's take a quick look on the four hour. Yeah, it's trying to eliminate these highs right here. And oil back into target.
All right, S&P went into that 45. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. It's gonna go right into target. Okay, we can't do anything about it. Let's see what happens into this resistance. There's nothing we can do here because I, I never chase price. Oh, the only thing that I could think about is maybe we can find some sort of entry into this laggard. Maybe it's gonna try to um, hold and pop while the rest are either basing or pulling back. I mean, that would be like, an idea, but again, we need to get it over these highs, 38, 35, 38. See, this is 25 here, and then you have the 38. Um. We can try it into 27, 27 for an entry. The stop would be 50, 650. Wow, that's a huge stop. 
Yeah, 27, 27, if you want to take it. Um, I don't know, this is so super aggressive. I'm not gonna type it in here. It's gonna be 727. It's gonna have a really wide stop into this below, uh, below 650, 650 for the stop. I mean, what is the reason I, I'm thinking, and again, in trading, you should not be thinking, okay? <laughs> Literally, like you either have the pattern or you don't have it. But I'm thinking it's like, why would NASDAQ not participate in this rally where even Russell, which was weak, um, structurally speaking, um, participated. Uh, we had YM and SMP just full throttle higher. And then we had NASDAQ that wasn't doing anything. And now all of a sudden it decides to rev up and push higher. Yeah, let, let's just wait. The NASDAQ really wants to go here. I don't have a tighter stop for it. I really don't. Because you know NASDAQ, NASDAQ can swoosh down and then, uh, I'm not gonna do NASDAQ. Little mini one minute rotation here. We're really watching it on this 
too small of a time frame. See, NASDAQ just pushed a little bit into 2875 and now I just pulled back again. These are very extended guys. We need at least to pull back into the 620 to 625 in the Dow and at least into the 4340 in S&P. 2260, uh, uh, 2258 for Russell. Okay, here is gold pushing a little bit higher. Okay, little mini doji here, but it's levitating into nothing. So it doesn't have any kind of support here. Uh, hey, Riaz. Uh, long 7445 and target. Um, okay, 75. Yeah, 75 would be a good, uh, a good area for it. Yep, 75 for QM, um, uh, NCO, the, the same thing. I'm looking at also, I'm looking at these bottoms right here, these candles that, you know, they're trying to hold above the 20 SMA so far. So in a range like this, I typically am not a big fan of tight stops because it could swoosh down, take you out, and then it's going to scream higher.
Whereas the only problem that I can see here with oil is that it's trading into resistance. Um, and it's gonna take a little bit until it digests this air. It's a little bit elevated from the 10 EMA as well. See what NASDAQ is doing, it's reacting again. And right now it's just coming off of this uh, 50 SMA here. This is our, um, I hate to say it, but if we're gonna have a trade, I think this is the best bet, although it's the worst index right now. <clears throat> Guys, I don't have any trades, literally, I don't have anything. I'm not jumping in to trades. I know the crappiest one here is NASDAQ, but I don't have entries in the rest. If we go by that five minute, we could actually try to use a stop at 700. Oh man, I would hate to get a stop out today when everything is just higher. We know that everything is higher and we could get a shake out in this. So NASDAQ over 30, I'm not even, I don't know.
over 30, I, I can't give you a stop. So use whatever you think. Um, like literally, I, I can't give you a stop on it. If you wanna use an emergency stop, like I said, my stop would be right here under 660, 665. If you wanna do like a really tight one, like, you know, kind of like a casino type of trade, it would be 30 by 700, 30 point stop, still wide, but it's not as wide as the 660. I'm gonna put this back on the level. No, I'm not in, John. Hey, Chris, awesome job. No, you don't have the confidence. I mean, I would have the confidence to stay in, but I don't have the confidence based on the current extension that, that it went from today's low to today's high. Like I really need a solid setup, but great job. You need to look, yeah, you need to, once you have the, once you have the setup, then you have the confidence. That, that's where the confidence is coming from. You have a solid setup, let's say a pullback, a rotation, whatever it is, a breakout, then you have it. Oh yeah, for sure. It's not that far. It's not that far away. Uh, Apple, Randy, let me take a look. Apple is into a daily rotation. Uh, also breakout that is going to take place at 44. Uh, 144.60. No, it's actually, one, no, no. Yeah, it needs to break 144. 460, but it needs to get over 145.10, and that's going to be the breakout. So, yeah, looks higher. Looks higher. It's, uh, I mean, it's overly extended on the weekly, but if you're trading it, for example, uh, as part of a monthly breakout, yes, it can go higher. 160 can go to 160, measured move. Hey guys, awesome job. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I, I can't stay in these. They're, they're so extended. It's, it's crazy. And I feel like I'm chasing and that's not a good feeling.
I mean, take a look at the market, guys. NASDAQ is coming in like, a, and it's doing exactly what I said it's going to do. I'm afraid that it's going to do that. And then if it's going to start retracing, like I said, and come back into, let's say, the 700 or below 700, it's probably going to go back down into that 660 area, violate that, and then it's going to take off. And here in YM, for example, YM, is, YM definitely looks, looks higher. So it's back into the value stocks. Back into the value stocks. <clears throat> and bigger target in YM, bigger time frame target in YM is 36,623. 36,623, that's the target. It's flying off a weekly rotation that triggered last week and today we're issuing continuation. So next week, this is super bullish, over 800, super, super bullish. So now the next target on it, is 750 and then we have 800 in fact 783 and then 800 so it does have another uh 50 points here but then again this becomes resistance so the resistance areas are going to be tighter as we're going higher I mean, we're not asking for much. We're just asking for a little bit of a pullback so we can get in. So it's 1030. And if things are not setting up right now, which are not, I don't think we're going to have anything today. Quite an impressive rotation in financials. Amazon is holding the highs. Apple is very strong. NVIDIA is into a really good area for getting ready for another swing, probably going into next week. So we went, let's see how high we went here. Was it like 20? Yeah, we went 24. Take a look at what NASDAQ is doing. Slingshot, possibly higher. Slingshot, possibly higher. I don't think it's done yet. It still has, but look at the momentum. Lower sideways in YM. Lower in Russell. Let's take Russell here back to the five minute.
Uh, hey, uh, corn for next week. Let me just put it here. Um, it's going to be a tough call on corn. It's going to be a tough call on corn. Corn needs to, uh, still has, st is still heading down. So this week still down, which means that the, if, if it closes week, the momentum is still, uh, in limbo. We really don't know whether up or down. No trades in uh, corn at all. Technically speaking, nothing. It'll have to get next week over this high. Yeah, so we would have to get over this high here, 552.50, 552.50. All right, little mini breakout in YM. Normally, I would never look at anything like this. And a five minute really, ugh, a rotation here that is setting up into resistance. Um. What do you do with YM after it has been up 13 hours? I mean, definitely. I'm gonna try to stay away from this range. It's gonna share with you what I what I see. Number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 hours into resistance. So 13 hours into resistance, and now it's forming a five minute breakout. Five minute breakout. So the breakout level is 25. Yep, 25, 25 is the breakout level. The risk is going to be 60. So it's going to be 725 by 660. And the target is going to be 750. Yeah, exactly, Lori. Like, I, I can't, I mean, listen, the overnight traders had the upper hand here. There's nothing that lined up today pattern wise for us. We were already 12 hours up. From the uh, from the time it's set up, I mean, literally, we're getting crumbs here. I mean, I would be okay with a little bit of crumb, literally, at this point. But when I see this extension into resistance, and it's like, can it break resistance? Yes, it can. And the fact that it's consolidating into resistance means that it wants to digest the resistance and head higher. But when we're looking at the target, the next target is into the 750, not that far away. So we're looking for 725 to 750 for a 25 point stop, risking a whole bunch because our stop needs to be into the 660. So it doesn't make any kind of sense, like the math doesn't add up. All right, NASDAQ rotated on the five minute and you can see that the price came right into resistance into the 26. So yeah, corn is going to be a hard pass for me. So like, I would say no. Uh, Randy, you were mentioning uh, HE. Yeah, terrible risk to reward, Randy. I agree. Yeah. Um, HE, I would look for it more for the bullish side because, uh, for example, on the weekly chart, it's not that bearish. It's not that bearish because we're holding this low into the 96 and we're stabilizing. See where the price is trading uh, right now, $100.85. Uh, $100 it's trading right into this area right here. So it's sustained by the support. So going into next week, if it gets over this 105 is bullish. If it gets 
under 96.50, then it's bearish. Then it's bearish. It could be bullish and bearish. Favor more the upside. I know it's having the pressure right now from the MAs. 98 would be, or 97.80 would be like the most aggressive short. Most aggressive short. Yeah, sure. I mentioned these this morning and I said that uh, I would not be in any of these trades. Um, soybeans, just like uh, corn and uh, wheat, wheat is a little weaker, but um, soybeans inside week support into the 1261. Um, it's trading in between moving averages. So that means that it's either gonna be bullish above 60, well, 1465, or it's gonna be bearish below 1265. So the levels are already set. Bullish above here and bearish below this segment. And the same with wheat, wheat is actually weaker. Okay, because you can see the price was uh, into the 20, and I'm looking at where, you know, not the spike, I'm looking at the meat of the candle, right? So, um, I'm looking on the price was trading between the 50 and the 20. See what happened. So once it crossed below the 50, it's going to start, ble it started to bleed and it's moving lower. Okay, let me know if you guys, ZB, sure. I mentioned ZB this morning that is into, um, and actually I showed it this morning. Um, it is a classic into resistance. We talked about the 200 SMA. This is a daily chart. So it came right into this 200 SMA, flurried obviously a little bit higher, and then it sold. So what it did is it did a sell right into the 200 SMA, which is classic. So this can potentially be a little bit more bearish. You can see that it's not coming in all the way, but as it's getting into the 162, 162 is gonna be the decision point again, at which point we become bullish again. So this is the area that we need to look for um, for some kind of bullish price action activity into the 162. So 162 is gonna be the line of the sand, not necessarily for um, bearish, uh, but for bullish. And then if it's holding the 162 and if it does smaller time frame formation, then we will look for um, uh, for a trade in it. All right, take a look at the huge surprise here. okay? Take a look at the huge surprise. We're having NASDAQ into the bullish above area while while we're having YM slightly mildly pulling back. And here's what I'm seeing on the 15 minute, okay? Topping tail, topping tail, topping tail, red. So if we get below uh, 670, we may start coming in at least into this 10 EMA. Not that I would do this, okay? Not that I would do with this. Technically speaking, it can possibly start moving lower from 670 to possibly 650 or so, or 625, but it can hold this area. And this time around, if it gets back into these highs, 
and meaning the 720 to 725, then it's going to start expanding higher. Okay. The stop, by the way, is the big problem here. So you can see here that the 660 is still support. Entry still uh, into that 725 area. There's nothing changed. Nothing has changed. And it could see, so this is, you could have a tighter entry in 720 for, let's say 720. Let me look again on the 15 structure this time for targets to see if they're different. No, they're not. Nope, it's still 750. 750 for the target. You want to do a Hail Mary. This is it. Of course, the bash. So yeah, this is such a classic sign of a cell here. Classic sign of a cell. Um, 200 MA rejection, topping tail, sellers are coming in. They're taking profit. So see here, you really don't know what, I mean, I think they're taking profit here. Okay, I think they're taking profit from this rally. So they're taking profit. I think th I, that's, that's, my, that's my guess. All right, the bull sandwich forming into resistance. This is the only thing that I would watch. Uh, nice bullish above. This is the confirmation that the price might be heading higher. Uh, 740, it's trading right there. Remember, if you want to stay long in 740, this is going to be your stop, 660. I mean, look at the pattern. You want to give yourself room. You, you, and again, these are really messy trades, really messy trades. Okay, Russell coming in, 15 minute. You can see 15 minute right on support. The more it stays here, and it has been here since 10 o'clock for almost an hour watching paint dry. So because it has been staying here, the more it stays here, the more this 10 EMA is gonna catch up with price. And the more it catches up with price, if it stays above within the next 10 minutes, then it can potentially start moving higher again. If not, it's gonna go back down, messy. Um, 15 minute in ES, above resistance and into resistance. So it had the, First area of resistance into the 44 to 45. This the next area is into the 48. And it's trying to digest this area. It's going doji up a little bit, but it's going doji up against resistance. Yeah, the only, the only, uh, let's say, trade, I wouldn't need, I wouldn't even qualify it as a trade, but it would be like this. Still, still the Dow, still the Dow. So uh, above this doji, I would do, I would do 20, not 14, but at, you could do 14, you could do uh, not 14, but 16. You could do 16. Uh, I don't know, not, not loving it. Not, I'm not loving it. I mean, wouldn't it suck like today, literally, like for us to get in a long and to get stopped out in an uptrend, like seriously. I hate when that happens.
Oh, Lori M. Yes. And M is another example of that range. Uh, and M needs to get over 20 bucks. M gets over 20 bucks. It's flying. All right, here it is starting to come in a little bit. Uh, look how divergent NASDAQ became. Like I said, NASDAQ would have been like our, let's say our worst case scenario type of trade that may possibly run higher. You see what happened? Institutions picked it up a little bit from level to level while retail traders did not. Uh, did not go in because retail traders cannot trade this chop with these white stops. Retail traders are looking for tight entries. I don't have anything here to show you, but they're looking for a nicer, cleaner type of because we don't have that. The the big um, uh, the big pockets. And by the way, snow. I just had a quick alert here into the 258. Um, I mentioned it yesterday, snow rocking and rolling. We have a first target into 260. Yeah, let's let's stop the down. I don't know. It, it, Let's stock the Dow into that 720 area. I see that ES is maybe going higher into 53. We have the next resistance into 53. Look at NASDAQ right now. Take a look at NASDAQ. Wow. I'm telling you, no risk, no gain. Good job, Randy. I like it. I love it. Ramesh, you really got it at 745. Good for you. I would uh, careful here. Um, this is the last level of like that huge resistance. This is like the last level from this point on. It can start really moving higher. Um, you have a stop. 760 is great. Look for next target into 785. It still has a little bit of resistance into 785, but this is a Big resistance right here into the 70. I'm glad that you guys, you know, some of you guys, you know, took some of the ideas and ran with them. Like I said, I don't really want to make anything official today because um, we have been running for 13 hours. Not NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is just waking up late right now. All right, let me give you the next target. Yeah, it's going to be 85, 85 next target. Uh, and then 800. So look for a transition into 800.
no participation from the Dow. And that's, that's part of the calibration because Dow is up over 1%. Uh, and you can see that the indices that are up over 1%, like Russell and the Dow, they're taking a break right now. And there's rebalancing in NASDAQ and S&P. They're trying to get into the same level. Um, Ramesh, I'm looking right now and I'm seeing that if NASDAQ is going to get below a 765, it's going to start coming in. So seven, yeah, you're good with, uh, with 760 for now. It needs to get over 80. So 80, 85 is target. 80, 80, 80, 85 is target. All right. And here's why I'm into the pullback. Let's see how it's go going to react into the 630 level. I didn't know. I didn't take, I didn't take NASDAQ. No. I didn't take anything today. Hey, Randy, have a great weekend. Really, Phyllis, it's great to see me not to take a trade. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, like, um, do I see it? Do we have the level? Yes, we do. Like, uh, for example, in NASDAQ. And I have been going back and forth, back and forth. And first of all, I said 27. And then I said, yeah, let's wait for 30 because I really didn't know how it was, it was going to react, but I did know one thing. Based on the levels that we had and based on the technicals, I knew that it was gonna get really whippy. And the fact that it didn't provide a really good entry for us, it meant that it didn't provide a good entry for anybody. 
So that's the reason why, you know, you didn't see like a huge, uh, you know, a pop up over that levels, but you saw a, a bit of a, um, let's say a grind into those levels. And that is because you didn't see the retail participation. The algos were there, the algos picked it up. Um, and, uh, and again, for the retail trader to give it a stop into this uh, 660, that was a little bit extreme. And then I try to narrow down to like smaller time frames, and they were incredibly choppy and incredibly tight. Um, and uh, they were violating different micro levels in charts, and they didn't make like a really good, robust, uh, um, for example, um, uh, um, let's say a technical stop for us because we talked about the fact that we were uh, trading off of this 20 SMA right here. And this is what we were watching all uh, basically since 10 o'clock. So at 10 o'clock, we had the wing down into 10 o'clock and then we started to, to hold this 20 SMA. And the 20 SMA was into the 700 level. So take a look what it did here. So it came to, to 703, violently down after it actually triggered. So have you guys noticed that lately we're getting the trigger and right after the trigger, they're getting the pullback immediately. So it's not like we're getting in and they're continuing higher. No, it we're, uh, we're having the price getting into the trigger and then chop, chop, chop down and then violent rotation to the upside, going back exactly to our entry level. So these are kind of like scary tactics that they're using to get everybody out there clearing, the, uh, they're clearing the stops so they can accumulate more from those bottoms. Like I said, I can trade like that any time of the day. I can't take it, in, I can't do this in the trading room because so many of you guys, you know, are trading with, um, you know, calculated risk, Cal and this is what trading should be calculated risk. And, you know, we could definitely, you know, I could definitely call trades right now that um, without having a stop or with, uh, with, uh, you know, playing around with a higher level that are going to take, that are going to hold you in, uh, in the trade. Uh, but you're going to be sort of like in a roller coaster trade because it's going to go up and down and up and down. It's going to go everywhere. So um, NASDAQ, once it got above that bullish above level, then it continued to go higher, but without providing any kind of entry. Typically when it gets into the bullish above, it likes to pull back a little bit and then it takes off. And this is what I was looking at. It did do that. So once it broke above the 20, uh, 27, so we had the level of 27 and 30. Once it broke over this level, finally, and look when it happened. So it happened after 1030 because this happened at 1030. So we had to pull back into 1030. But again, we didn't have a lot of confirmation that the price was ready to go higher unless we had, and this is when the volume came in. So the volume came in at 1040 and after, actually it was at 1043. And then we started to uh, test the bullish above area and then higher. Now you can see here, it went exactly into the 80s, 80 to 85. Remember I said the big target is 85, huge target is 85, huge, huge target is 85. Um, and the next target is gonna be 800. So now the only thing that it trades on, it trades off of this five minute momentum. This is what it is, five minute momentum. So now the line of the sand is that we have support into the 70. If we start trading over 90, then we can see 800. And if we break 800, it's going to go in pretty much in five and 10 point increments. It's going to go like eight, 805, 810. Uh, the next one is going to be 815. Then we have 820. So it's going to be a little bit grindy. But right now, and uh, Ramesh, I know you're in. Wow. Uh, great job. Uh, your stop should be right now 73. So 73 is going to be your stop. See this level right here is into the 70s. You either want to give it 70 or 73, not a big difference. Uh, but this would be the level that right now NASDAQ needs to hold. Um, yeah, so let's take this back to CL. All right. So yeah, CL advancing nicely. Um, yeah, um, careful because you have the Baker Hughes rig, uh, uh, oil rig count at one o'clock. That may shake the market, uh, the oil market as well. Uh, 
Oh, okay. I, I saw your post right now. Good job. Yeah. Like I said, you know, like, and take a look what is happening. NASDAQ advanced while Russell stalled. And then we had the YM stall, right? So you can see that they're not moving in sync. You guys know when these indices are not moving in sync, they're hard to trade. Oh, and by the way, YM, why is, YM is trading into the same, uh, in, back into the same pattern. So remember what I said, that it's gonna try to come back. Let's see how it's holding this 10 EMA. And if it's gonna rotate, this could potentially be another uh, breakout into the 720. So over seven, you could even get it. This line is at 714. 714 is okay. It's not big confirmation, but um, let's see. Seven, yeah, even 710 can be used. 710 can be used. Yeah, 710 can be used for the entry. If you want to do a Hail Mary tray, like I said, it's 710 by 650. 710 by 650. So it's going to have a 60 point stop. And the target, we discussed it, it's 750. And if it rides higher, it goes higher. So. Okay, Ramesh, you're rocking today. You're rocking the market today. And um, Five minute rotation and rest, a uh, 15 minute, I'm sorry, rotation and wrestle. I don't know how far they were gonna go. We're 15 minutes away from um, the London session close. No, no, I would not short it.
Yeah, I really don't know if we're going to start going. I'm actually considering like pulling my order out. We don't have to sign uh, Sebastian to short. So remember what we saw, like we need to see some kind of a technical sign uh, for us to go short. Uh, like we saw in um, uh, ZB, remember that we need to have either an indicator uh, like moving average or prior resistance or something that proves to be weak. So this is incredibly strong. One minute and two minute rotations in uh, YM. We still haven't gotten into the 710 area. <clears throat> All right, this could be a five minute. I'm literally looking at micro, like I'm micro looking at this and oh, I hate it. I just don't like it. Okay, cancel the YM trade. Cancel YM, cancel YM. I'm still on, on, I'm still watching it, but I'm not excited about it anymore. I'm trying to see if it does a little mini pivot. Maybe we could just have a tighter stop. And that tighter area that I'm looking is into the 680 versus our original area that we had. Um, into the 650.
Yeah, Jamie. <laughs> It's the best would be today to to take the day off. <laughs> See why I'm still stalking why I'm guys because it's creeping up a little bit here. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do 710 original trade 710. Let's do 710. Keep the original stop into the 650 until we. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Jamie. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's do the They're all going a little bit higher right now. I don't know. See, this is what I don't like happening. So once they start, you know, the past five minutes, you know, from, yeah, uh, they punched a little bit higher and then, um, I don't know. Yeah, um, I'm in. I'm telling you, I will. I would really hate to get stopped out from a long position today where the market rallied 414 points. This is chasing the trade. Just so you know, this is chasing the trade. This is something that you should not do, but we're going to try to get it as super tight as we can into this. And we're going to try to put our stop to break even as soon as I see a technical level inside. And that's probably going to be over 35 or 40 level once we get into that area. Here's the 10 again. Okay. <laughs> it needs to get over twenty five. NASDAQ is going towards 800. Too bad we don't have a lot of room into that, into this Dow here. I see 750 as a big lid, not unless it finds some really big volume, some big shark coming in and just buying a whole bunch 
of contracts here. All right, the moment of truth is going to be in about five minutes. Uh, London session will close and we're gonna have the moment of truth. If they're gonna start taking profit, then this trade is gonna be a wipeout. If uh, we are still going to hang on, if they're still gonna hang on to the gains from the overnight trading session, remember we're heading towards 15, 14 hours of continuous bullish momentum. You can you, only by saying it out loud, you can imagine how ridiculous it would be. Like we, we really still have high hopes of going higher after 13 hours, 14 hours of moving higher. I know. I was like, oh, okay, I'm getting in long right now after the market has rallied 13 hours. The move has happened in the overnight. Let's face it. The move has happened. The big move, the big money was, uh, was overnight. That's when they got in. All right. The last hour's high. <laughs> that 13 hour high um, is uh, 724. We actually have a brand new little ticker high of 726 right now. Here's the 730. Seven, um, that high into the 726 uh, came with, like I said, with a bit of volume. I don't know if that was a big shark or not. No, it seems that not. It's just an algo push, just a little bit of an algo push. I am telling you right now, I would put my stop at break even. I, I'm just pull, pulling my stop to break even. I don't. I don't want to do anything. Um, the last three minutes are going to be insane. We're either going to pop up hard, or we're going to have a big pullback in the price. Just so you know. Two more minutes. <clears throat> Just a little ticker higher into 35. Remember the stop, my stop, I, I mean, you could do whatever you want. My stop is at break even right now. 50. I don't know if it's going to get above 50. If it's going to get 50, 50, 55, 60, 65, these are huge targets. Huge. Like I said, I have my stop at break even. I'm not, like I said, we have one minute, one minute. I don't know if they're going to start selling it. Take a look at the one minute here. What did I say was going to happen? That's why I have my stop at break even. I don't care. I don't want to be reckless. And it's going to be up, done. It's at 12. <laughs> we held by two ticks. It's a huge resistance at 50. I don't know if it's going to get above 50. The next target would be um, 800 and 820. But that's like bigger. 
that's like bigger time frame. That's like bigger time frame. That's why I wanted to show you guys the momentum on the one minute, because this is what happens into the London session and you don't know what's going to happen. And by the way, we're not steering for free and clear here because, um, okay, here's the moment of truth. Here's the moment of truth. Man, did we ever nail that break even? Did we ever nail it? By the way, if you're very new to the room, remember that when I call a trade in of the full size contracts, you need to give them a little bit more wiggle room when you're trading the micros because they are going to be a lot more whippier. Okay, they're a lot more whippier. They're a lot more volatile. All right, now we need to see a print of 37 if we want to see the 40s, 45s, and then 50s. Here's the 37. So anything that trades above 50 is going to be like a gift all the way uh all the way into the um, 780 to 800 area. <laughs> Ramesh, you're killing it. Ideally, right now, 720 needs to hold. So that would be 10 points above where we got in. And don't forget that we have SMP that is trading into resistance right here as well. Let me show you the momentum on all of these. Okay. I'm not gonna, I, I'm not, listen, I'm not gonna get it any tighter than break even. If you guys want to, let's say, call it a day, 720, just 10 points and that's it. 10 points and that's it. It's better than a loss, right? And like I said, these are Hail Mary trades. You should never do this. What, what I just did here, you should never do this. Literally. Yeah, let's do 720, trail 720. Trail We have a low of 724, 720 is my out and I'm done.
Let's see if we get it over this high. The momentum is good right now for ES and for YN. We have a high to 740. Let's see how we close. Okay. Um, two more minutes left. Negative yard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so funny. When I get my act together. <laughs> okay. So we have, let's see. Yeah. Two more minutes left. I'm looking for that five minute close. That's that's my biggest concern because if we're closing strong on that, here, here we go. Yep, yep, good, good, good. And we have, all right, we have a new high, 45. Just so you know, like I'm taking like literally like 99% of my trade off, just so you know. All right, what we need is just one punch higher. Let's bring the stop up a little bit here. Let's get ready. Um, just wanting to take my 
<laughs> my trade off at 750. I'm more concerned about that. Okay, come on. One more. There we go. There we go. Uh, okay, Charles stop 740. Trail stop 740, 740. Awesome, Ravish. 740. I'm in literally, like, I'm telling you guys straight on, only have one contract left. That's it. And that is with the trail stop at 740. Like, the big bulk is out at 750. Russell is interesting. Russell may want to pop up a little bit. Look at this range on the one minute. This is the big resistance. From this point on, we're looking like from five points to 10 points higher. So we're going to move in very small increments. Went out of the screen. Here we go, 60s, we have it at 64, 64 new high. We're gonna try to stay in. Okay, last lot, let's trail it into 50. Let's trail 50. Or if you want to take it out at, if you want to take it at 60, um, let's see. Let's see how we close this little one minute. Because we're trading literally the one minute chart right now. Trail 60, really trailing it tight.
We're going to look for the 80s right now. Wow, Ramesh, you are killing it with NASDAQ. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you see the one minute nice tight consolidation here. So we have a pretty good stop into the 60, right? We have a low of 62. And we're out. And we're out. Told you that 50 is a big deal right there. Comes from a higher time frame. Oh, what a day. What a day. All right, any questions, guys? We're done for the day. Ramesh killed it. He's the trader of the day. Literally. All right. I mean, yeah, Ramesh, you killed it. Let me know if you want my take on it. You did really well today. Okay. Uh, who was in CL? I forgot who was in Q QM or CL. Put your stop and break even. Put your stop and break even. You're getting super close um, to one o'clock. Super close to one o'clock. All right. Guys, this is it. Uh, tomorrow. I'm very excited for next week. Uh, we start earnings season on Tuesday. We have releases as well, uh, where we're slowly easing into, we're slowly going into earnings season. We are going to have financials because we have financials. Uh, YM is going to be, re, uh, um, it's going to be really reactive along with ES. And I think that we're going to get, uh, we're going to get a lot more, um, a lot better setups and a, a lot more, um, uh, price action into these uh, into these indices. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I I would say yeah. This this twenty SMA is going to be it. Eight hundred. Yeah, eight hundred. Seven ninety nine is is great because I don't like to put the stops right into the whole number. So seventy seven ninety nine is great. No, do not give it room. Do not give it room. You did really well. So from this point on, it's just about trailing. It's not even about, because targets are as the price moves higher. That, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions as we're heading into the weekend. Really looking forward. And Mark, I know that you were like in copper, but a copper looks really good for next week. Uh, how can I find out which stocks are under each uh, index? Um, Sebash, are you using Thinkorswim or any other? What platform are you using? And Thinkorswim. Um, hey, Holly. Okay. Um, okay, so I can show you right now. So, for example, 
like I said, I really don't know how other platforms are, but you should have um, most of the platform. The specific futures platforms are not going to have this. But if you have, for example, a trading platform where you can uh, trade stocks on as well. Um, hold on, because that just closed, accidentally closed it instead of showing it to you. Hold on. You should have some watch lists. Okay. Where did my gadget go? Yeah, hold on, guys, because there's something like really weird happening here. Yes, for sure. I hate losing on a Friday and I think everybody does. Okay, for some reason, let me see where my watch list is. My watch list disappeared for some reason. It's not here. It's not on my platform. I don't know, hold on. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to pull it up here. I think they did an update on the platform last night. Because I'm seeing some changes here. Okay. All right, all set. I'm going to be sharing the screen. Okay. All right. So you guys can see here, this is my watch list. It's available on pretty much any platform um, that trade that you can trade stocks on. And uh, if you go uh, to, for example, here on the thinkorswim, um, you have, for example, uh, public. You could go under public if you can see this. And under public, you go, they're in alphabetical order. So you can go under each one. So this is, for example, for the Dow. Okay, so as you know, the Dow has 30 stocks under it. I like to sort them uh, by percentage change, by, by percentage change, percentage change, okay. Um, and you can see here that these are the stocks that are under, uh, for example, for Dow, you have Goldman Sachs that is leading today, you have Caterpillar up, um, you have Honeywell, Disney, um, et cetera, okay. Microsoft, which is flat today, Microsoft totally flat today. All right, so you go to the same watch list, and Sebastian, I think you're using thinkorswim. Okay. And then you go into public again. All right. And you want to go under the uh, under NASDAQ. So you go to NASDAQ 100. Okay. And these are going to be your NASDAQ, NASDAQ stocks. Okay. I, I guess it's a habit. I sort them ascendantly all the time because I want to see if there's um, if there's momentum and if, how many stocks, for example, are higher, I like to look, for example, at the first uh, uh, 20 stocks uh, when I'm looking for leaders and I'm looking for 20 stocks, for example, uh, for laggards, right? So these would be the laggards. So I'm not seeing a lot of laggards. You could see most of them are um, into like the break even territory and then half a percent, this is literally not significant. And then once they're down 1% or more, for example, D DXCM, you could see here that's down $7, but compared to uh, the value of the share, share size, 
uh, it's not that big of a deal, right? Because it's a $440 stock, 7% is not a big deal. Uh, so I'm looking to see you're also getting a little bit of, um, uh, let's say, momentum action. So I look at this, I look at finvis.com, I look at Benzinga, I look at a whole lot of things. Uh, but I like to look at, uh, at this in particular. And then, for example, if you want to go to the S&P, um, I, I like, to, so you could do Russell as well. So you have all these indices here. Um, you have, uh, for example, Russell 1000. Russell 2000 is actually the RTY. So Russell 2000 is um, um, IWM, okay? Uh, you have the S&P, oops. These are so sensitive, okay? You have the S&P 500, you have the S&P 100. I, I usually, um, and that's just me, okay? I look at the S&P 100 mostly, not the S&P 500, although the S is S&P 500, okay? But uh, this gives me a better idea and I don't have to scour through 500 stocks. Definitely that's way too many. Uh, but these are, the S this is the S&P 500 and gives me uh, pretty much the same gauge Okay, it's a little tighter. Uh, and of course you're going to, and you can see here the weak, uh, the weak uh, uh, stocks within the S&P 100, Adobe, AMAD, Amazon, and, and they're not even weak. They're pretty much sideways as you can see here. All right, Pepsi, this, this is still a stock that, that, that I'm in, by the way. Yeah, all right. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, so this is this is pretty much it. Any questions, guys? Do you okay? Let me show you, uh, for example, Benzinga. Just um, at Benzinga, there was a question this week. Okay, there was a question this week about Benzinga, you know, how you can get a feel of the momentum. Like I said, I use so many, uh, I have so many, so much, so many softwares that I'm using. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, close this and transfer the screen. Where did it go? I can't see it here. Okay, here. Okay. So this has been saying, uh, this is mostly for stocks um, that this screen here, because it's the price spikes. I have the halt uh, stocks that are being halted. And when they resume, they're gonna be posting them right here. I have the block trades that are super helpful, especially in earning season, because you get a feel of what's moving, what's not moving. You get a feel of, um, not only that, but you get a feel of if there are some heavy buyers or, you know, heavy sellers. I mean, if there's some heavy uh, activity into one of these, uh, one of these names, then yeah, you're going to take a look at it. So you can see, for example, Dish, but this is mostly stocks, okay? If you're into the um, uh, uh, um, stock swing program, I keep tabs of these, okay, for you. Um, all right, then you have earnings. This is going to be super interesting, uh, especially next week, because this is where I'm getting my earnings, okay? Um, so you can see today, we only had two stocks that reported earnings, and uh, on Tuesday, we're going to have a lot more. So, uh, so, so next week and the following week, we're going to have uh, some mild earning weeks and then full throttle earnings and all that stuff is going to be starting with the third week. So week, uh, week three, four, five, and six are, are heavy, super, super heavy. All right, then I have my scanner um, and I like to look through these uh, setups right here. So uh, these are gonna point me towards, you know, um, you know, for example, the percentage change, um, you can get these uh, actually pre-market once they're setting up. These are super useful, especially if you're day trading. This is really awesome because these are going to give you, I mean, for example, this stock is up 66, 
uh, let's say 63 per, 63% right now, 64%. This one is a five, eight, whatever. So you're going to get a really good read on what's probably moving pre-market and what's likely to move after the market opens. Uh, then you have <clears throat> the analyst rating. I go through these uh, in the morning typically. So uh, when I look at I'll look at when I look at these um, uh, analyst ratings are basically starting with eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, I start looking at them. Eight o'clock, eight fifteen, and then uh, look Costco for example. Um, okay, so you take a look at it. Uh, Morgan Stanley says overweight. Um, so there's a lot of information, but again, mostly, uh, mostly swing, swing trading and day trading. If you're, um, trading, uh, news, this, uh, these are news really, uh, news releases that are uh, associated with, um, uh, that are associated with, uh, stocks, which very important to have, especially if you're in, uh, if you're in a trade. Oh, you can see, for example, here, the spies, it's marked with red, okay? Um, uh, trading at session high, 1% on the day, et cetera. Uh, and this is my favorite, uh, favorite, um, uh, let's say, tab, which are the signals. I have highs and lows. Uh, this is going to give you also a good idea of the market breadth, because if, if this column is running uh, much faster than the red column, see this one is uh, this one is moving. So the the green column is moving while the red column is not moving. It means that very few stocks are making new lows while the majority of stocks are making new highs. Okay, so you can see a lot of highs. A lot of times when uh you know uh when I'm you know literally bored in the room. I like to go through these stocks, for example, and say, Baba, Baba, if it's, uh, if I see a two to three times here, I'm going to pull it on a chart. And if I see a setup, I may even take a day trade in it. Okay. Uh, or if it's lining up for a swing trade, I'm going to keep it on a list and I uh, determine my uh, trigger points. Uh, then I have the pre-market. Pre-market is so important. I love this. And as you can see here, this is the stock, the SGOC, for example, that is trading with almost 65% up. This is where you're going to get your pre-market info. This is great. For example, yesterday we had one, I forget what stock it was. It was C something that was up, I don't know, ballistic, 200%, 300%, I forget. This is where you get them from here. Uh, and then I have unusual options activity. I like to look at this as well. It gives me a lot of information. Look at snow. So uh, I, by the way, I picked up snow yesterday uh, from Benzinga, right? So this is where I picked it up. Um, by the way, where is snow? Let's see. Oh my gosh, it's trading above target one. Yay. Okay. And then you have a chart. Okay. Um, for example, if I want to see snow, snowflake. All right. Here it is. Okay. And this is the daily chart that, and um, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and of course, you can have the chart, you have the time frames. This is powered by trading view. So you have all this information. So you, I really don't have to have the platform open if I want to do some scanning or if I want to see what's going on with, you know, one stock or another. Um, but yeah, this is super, super helpful. Super helpful. So I know there were some questions, um, you know, in the trading room. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, the 260, uh, Dan, 260 was the big target in snow. Did you get a chance to get in? Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we're pretty much, you can see here this horizontal line, which is trading into, uh, into resistance right now because this is support that is creating resistance for price, but it's actually moving higher. So we're gonna look for the next segment, which is gonna be into the 278.
Yeah, I would say 270. Let's let's do 270 and then we're going to look um, for 280 because it's moving from $10 to $10. These increments are going to be and they look good into 300. 300 to 320. Yeah. Um, all right, the sweep, what is the sweep? It's, it's, act, it actually applies to options. Like I said, and a sweep is, uh, that, um, that it needs to be routed more than one way. And then you get a, the sweep number. Um, and the number is like how many routes. So if you're into options, you want to take a look at that. Um, Uh, do you use scan and think or swim? No, I never used it. I've never used the think or swim scanner. Um, I am also using uh, trade ideas for a scanner that I have it. I can't show it to you because I have it on a laptop, which is on my right hand side. I don't have it on my screen anymore because I have so much, so much stuff on my screen. It is and I have it, it's unbelievable. Okay, unbelievable. The amount of um, pages that I have open and all of these are web based. Sushil, um, yes. What do I have on all oh, on this one? Okay, on this one, I have earnings. Okay, I have the news feed right here. And I have my block trades. Because if I have a block trade to me, that's a lot more um, interesting. But uh, like I said, my favorite, my favorite, um, I have to tell you, uh, is the pre-market. If you're trading stocks, I love this, the pre-market. Um, you get a lot of ideas from this. And of course, oh, this was the one, C-A-R-V, C-A-R-V. This was, uh, let me just put it here. This was up massively yesterday and today again it's up like 40 percent was up okay so see what it did yesterday you can get these momentum stocks and by the way this one oh my gosh look at the two minute yesterday okay so anyways so all yeah to answer your question you have uh, the news feed here, which is very important because it's associated with the stocks, et cetera, et cetera. You have earnings and I have my um, block trades. Yeah. All right, guys, this is it for today. Um, I will see you guys next week on Monday. Charge your batteries because we're heading into earnings season. Earning season. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, guys.